There we go. Oh, Brian Vincent again. Okay. <laughs> well, you can you can say anything you want, and they'll just blame it on Ryan now. Anyone else joined yet? Two people in the waiting room. Okay, good. It's nice to have an audience. We've had several people ask if this is going to be recorded. So I think people are planning on watching it later. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. Oops. With what happened to the uh, commissioner who was appointed and kicked out? Well, they just vote the board appoint someone else or appoint reappoint her with the, after some notice. Or do you have any idea? They had a special meeting last night to appoint um, a replacement for Jim Angel who resigned. But at the same meeting, they appointed somebody to fill the seat that had been vacated by Teresa. So they appointed two new people last night. Oh, okay. Gosh. Made to keep up with the news. <laughs> <laughs> Too many things happening in Woodford. I don't know that it's actually been in the news, so you, I don't think you missed anything. Okay. I was hoping that we would have some commissioners here tonight, actually. Yeah. So that doesn't look like that's going to be the case. Any planning board members or steering committee members? I let everybody know about it. And I, and I didn't get any confirmations necessarily, but I did get some questions. Maybe okay. some of them go into the drop in session at yeah. school. And it's, you know, the, it is nice that this is being recorded so folks can watch it when they, at their leisure. So are we, are we looking to get feedback from them tonight, the people that are participating on they the have, call? Yeah, if they have anything to say or, you know, the last slide is just the, uh, the, the link to the survey. So. I'm going to uh, just let them know that they can take the survey at any time, but if they have any questions or comments they want to make tonight, they're welcome to.
I have 5.30, do you want me to let them in? Yeah, go ahead and let them in, yeah. Okay, is everyone in? Everyone is in. Ready to go? Yep. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for taking the time to, to attend this virtual community meeting. Um, I appreciate the time you're taking to become informed about Woodland's comprehensive planning effort and to provide input. The plan will be based upon the input from the community members. So your participation is not only welcome, but is necessary to the successful outcome of the planning effort. We'll talk about today's agenda. First, welcome and uh, some introductions. We'll talk about what is a comprehensive plan, give you a project overview, uh, a look at the project schedule, We'll examine the survey responses we've received so far. We'll look at the existing conditions and background information which have been collected by the uh, planning team. We'll talk about our community engagement, what we're doing and what we propose to do. <clears throat> look at the draft vision statement, <clears throat> excuse me, discuss guiding principles uh, and their role in the planning effort. And we'll talk about the next steps and then have an opportunity for you to provide some input and also to ask questions. Yeah, I don't believe there are any <clears throat> town elected or appointed officials attending this virtual meeting. Adrian, could you introduce yourself and let folks know who you are? Sure, I'm Adrian Eisenhower. I'm the planning director for the town of Whitfin and I am assisting um, Gerald and team with this project. Um, we're excited about all the responses we've gotten so far and the good feedback from the community. And so we just want to, I just want to thank you guys for being here tonight. And uh, we look forward to seeing what you might have to add to, to our community feedback. Thank you. I want to, to uh, introduce you to Linda Geltz, even though she is not participating in the virtual meeting. She's at the drop-in meeting at the French Broad River Academy. <clears throat> she's a planner who's worked with Landis Scott Regional Council for many years and retired from that and is now working as an independent planner is, is taking a, the lead role in our community outreach and is a key member of the team. The JMT staff, the, that's uh, JMT Engineering and Planning. Uh, Kenny Armstrong is a, a key member of our team. He's been with uh, TIG Engineering and Planning for about five years. He's a community planner. He's also at the drop-in meeting at, at the French Park River Academy, and I'm Gerald Green. I've been in uh, Western North Carolina for a long time. I came to Brevard upon receipt of my master's degree in planning to serve as a planning director for Brevard in 1982. Also served as planning director for Jackson County. In 1989, I came to the city of Asheville and worked with the planning department for about 14 years, uh, ending as chief city planner. And then I had my own firm for about nine years and actually did some projects for the town of Whitman. My firm did the 2008 comprehensive plan and also did the uh, pedestrian greenway and bikeways plan for the town. And most recently I worked as executive director for the Knoxville, Knox County planning in Knoxville, Tennessee. And I retired from that about a year and a half ago, moved back to Asheville and became affiliated with JMT. Okay, on to the next step. <clears throat> Our goals and outcome for today uh, for you to gain a better understanding of the project. We'll, again, as I said earlier, we'll present the project schedule, we'll discuss survey results, review the existing conditions, 
or identify additional community engagement efforts. And if any of you have any ideas when we get to that point, please let us know because again, the, the success of this effort is dependent upon the comments we received from the citizens. We'll also discuss the future land use map and provide an opportunity for, um, for community input. Why did we plan? <clears throat> creates that uh, shared long range vision that we need to enable the community to work together to achieve its goals and uh, envision what it's managed, helps us manage growth by balancing the interests of different competing uh, parties. We leverage the locations such as along uh, Weaverville Highway, which are appropriate for more intense development and sustain the quality of life in the community. We try to address current problems and anticipate future issues and guide land use and zoning and policy decisions. One of the best um, statements for provide a plan is actually from a George Harrison song. And that statement is, if you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. So we've tried, we'll be working to create that shared vision so that we know where we're going and can identify the route to get us there. What is comprehensive planning? It covers the broad, broad range of topics over a long-term horizon. We acknowledge Whitman's proud history and small town character, but the small town character was one of the key elements that was identified in the 2008 address on current problems and, and overall priorities for the future. We identify and recognize community goals and aspirations. And guide, it serves as a guide for legislative actions and development approvals for 10 to 20 years. And as, in doing that, it guides our zoning and land use decisions in alignment with the identified vision. We, our comprehensive plan is just that it is comprehensive. We'll look at existing conditions and emerging trends, look at future land use, Housing and housing becomes an important element given the, the uh, status of the housing market now and the difficulty for, especially for younger people and people who work in this area to, to uh, find housing that is affordable. We'll look at economic development, transportation, and all modes of transportation, not just vehicular, but pedestrian and bikeways and other means of transportation. We'll give, provide an overview of utilities and the infrastructure primarily the, uh, the transportation system, a quick review of parks and recreation within the town of Whitman, natural and cultural resources. And the plan structure, and we'll get into this a bit more later, but we have a vision and guiding principles, which then result in some goals and objectives, and then the implement, implementation of those goals and, and objectives will enable us to achieve the shared vision the plan promotes. <clears throat> How should the plan be used? As I've stated before, I'll guide zoning ordinance updates and direct zoning and rezoning decisions. And provide some, uh, some direction for development approvals. I'll support capital investment planning and I'll inform private development decisions. When private developers look at the plan, they can identify where development is appropriate, what type of development the community wants, and then propose plans that are in alignment with that vision that's set forth in the comprehensive plan. And the plan itself is intended to be somewhat flexible and it, it's important that it's updated and amended as appropriate as conditions change. Our plan is not legally binding, but it, it does provide that guidance and direction for administrative and legislative approvals of development. Our project schedule was started in October of 2021 with this effort, spending the first few months collecting background data, coming up with a community engagement and outreach plan and looking at existing plans and documents to provide a, a foundation for the planning effort. That we're currently in the phase two, which is visioning through community engagement with, a, with our survey, our stakeholder interviews, the drop-in event that's at the French Broad River Academy tonight and those are boards and the information presented there will move around throughout the community. We're also uh, 
holding this virtual meeting, which will be recorded and available for, for other folks to look at at their leisure. Our follow up efforts will following the uh, input from the community and the gathering of, of the community thoughts and desires will be to develop the future land use map and develop policy recommendations to uh, to be the, uh, the final plan for production. And the, our last phase will be developing implementation strategies to implement those goals and recommendations set forth in the plan and finally plan adoption. Where currently you see, see the green marker that shows where we are, we're in early February and we're putting, we're gathering that public input. The public survey is, is a key element of that. Is there a, or other means, and we'll just discuss the community survey in a few minutes. Right now, the uh, response counts as of last week, we had about 420 responses to the survey, about just over two thirds of those were complete surveys, with the third being partial, meaning that some of the questions were not answered on, in about a third of the um, surveys received. As far as the results, the question about which would be the town's highest priority is there are three items that stand out protecting the natural resources and the environmentally sensitive areas, managing population growth and new development, and improving the transportation infrastructure, including bicycle pedestrian facilities. We have a number of comments directed to towards those three items. And at this point, they're guiding the development of the uh, policy recommendations. A question was, what are the things that make you most excited about Woodson's, Woodson's future? And you'll see the uh, emphasis on uh, parks and recreation, out of doors, but also um, addressing growth and development and how to uh, enable the town to grow, but do it in a way that benefits the entire community. Is there anything you could fix about with um, the lack of pedestrian facilities, the uh, bike lanes needed, and there's uh, some opposing thoughts, you know, extend sewers to, sewer to all areas where Woodfin water is provided to promote development, but we also have uh, comments such as halt new construction. The most interesting one here, uh, thought is bear safe trash can. Having uh, experienced in Woodfin uh, bears braiding my trash can, uh, I can understand that sentiment. The phase one of the, uh, of the planning effort has been discovery and analysis, looking at background information, the existing conditions, et cetera. And what we've learned so far is comes from past and current comprehensive plans, a 2008 draft comprehensive plan. Again, it was recommended by the planning board, but it was not adopted. And the key guiding principle in that plan was maintaining the small town feel and character of Woodfin. In 2021, the uh, comprehensive plan was adopted and it provides goals and objectives to guide the development in Woodfin. It also serves as a bridge to the 2042 comprehensive plan that we are working on now. The demographic and socioeconomic analysis of the town of Woodfin looked at the population and the growth since, especially since 2000, the uh, town's population has increased by, by 30% from 2010 to 2020, with a current or 2020 population of 7,936. The uh, growth, you'll see a good bit of growth between 2000 and 2010 also. A good portion of this growth was related to the area that was annexed into the town and that population then became part of the town's population. Interesting facts, uh, Woodfin's population is younger than Buncombe County's with median age and Woodfin being 39.3 and Buncombe County uh, three years older at 42. And 18% of uh, Woodfin's population is less than 18 years of age compared to about 22% of North Carolina. The older adult population, 65 plus in Woodfin, is less than in Buncombe County by about three percentage points, indicating that Woodfin is a 
place where young families make their homes due to its uh, location, its uh, access to outdoor recreation, the river, and also the lower cost of housing comparatively in Woodfin. Here's some more information regarding the uh, population by age group in, in Whitman. As you can see, the uh, number of people between the ages of 25 and 64 make up 57% of the population, like 16% in the 65 to 84 age group and 18% under the age of 18. And again, the median age in, uh, in uh, Woodfin is about three years <clears throat> younger than the county as a whole and about the same as North Carolina, the state of North Carolina median age. The demographic data with regard to the racial makeup of the population, Woodfin has about 88% uh, white, a little less than Duncan County, about 90%, but much more than the state of North Carolina as a whole at 70%. The non-white racial makeup of, uh, of uh, Woodfin is skewed heavily towards uh, uh, Hispanic and Latino. If you look at the chart on the right, Woodfin is on the left side of that chart with a small percentage of Black, African-American, Native American, Asian, a few more races. But again, about 14% of the uh, population is Hispanic, Latino. The median household income and Woodfin is about $4,000 a year less than in Buncombe County and about 6,000 less than in North Carolina. Yeah. <clears throat> this fact makes you realize that it could be attributable to the younger population, young families are not making as much money as the older folks have not been in the job market as long. And it could also be due to the, uh, the Hispanic population who are usually employed in, uh, in less lucrative uh, jobs. The uh, owner occupancy rates in Woodfin between uh, 2015 and 2019 showed that about 50% of the homes in Woodfin are owner occupied as compared to just about 63% in Buncombe County and about 65% in North Carolina showing that Woodfin does uh, provide housing for more transient population, but has an even, pretty much even split between owner occupied and, and rental property. Now we'll look at the maps, which provide a, an overview of the existing infrastructure and natural characteristics of the community. The zoning map, current zoning map is a indicator of the type of development permitted and located throughout the community and provides us with a good base of information for making future land use decisions. The uh, flood hazards are minimal in what been there's some flood area along the French Broad River, some along uh, Beaver Dam Creek and some along the creek that flows out of Baird Cove, but not heavily impacting the development of the community. It does, the uh, floodway, flood fringe of the French Broad River does pose some challenges with the redevelopment of properties along the river, which is becoming a prime area for, for that development and redevelopment. The uh, sewer district, as I show you the sewer district maps and the water district maps, please note that these are older maps from 2004, the most recent one that we have. And also there is a reluctance to share information about water line location and sewer line location due to uh, concern about terrorism and impacts on those water collection systems and uh, wastewater collection systems and water distribution systems at their locations. And now the Woodfin uh, is pretty well served by sewer, by the Metropolitan Sewer District. The uh, water is a uh, provided by the Woodfin Water District and serves most of the town, the, uh, the area to the west, if you can see, let's see if you can see my cursor. You can see this area, that's one area that has not been served 
is thoroughly by the water system. The topography in Woodfin is uh, and a characteristic that impacts development and growth significantly in areas that are steeper topography and more difficult to develop. The darker the area is, looking at the Baird Cove area, see a lot of lines, topo lines close together uh, down in this area, west of the river, and some up in the northwest. The, again, the topo is an environmental constraint on development will make it tough to, to develop and will, we think push develop and redevelop into those areas more environmentally suitable for that development. This is publicly owned property with the uh, red being the state of North Carolina, the sort of teal, the uh, Buncombe County, and then the town of Woodsman is the sort of greenish olive colored properties showing some opportunities for redevelopment and thought, how do we redevelop these large properties or would the state and county be willing for us to look at redevelopment and be very challenging with the county owned property, the old landfill. Can, can we do something with the old prison state, uh, prison site that is owned by the state of North Carolina? This is a, a map of the sidewalk screenways and parks with the uh, existing sidewalks being the one along Elk Mountain Road, the existing greenway being the one at, Green, at Riverside Park and a lot of plans for future greenways and sidewalks. As if you may remember that one of the uh, goals or one of the needs identified in the survey was more pedestrian facilities. This map certainly indicates the verifies that need is the only existing sidewalk is again the one along Elk Mountain Road and back Town Hall down to Riverside Drive and then the existing Greenway is the one at Riverside Park. <clears throat> Unimproved in public land. This shows potential opportunities for development but think back to the topo map that showed you know, some steep property in down west of the river up in this area where there's undeveloped property in Baird Cove and other scattered locations throughout the community. It's the uh, lack of development in these areas due to the, the uh, topography or other reasons. That's something we'll do further research on. And public engagement is, is continuing and again has been a key element of this, uh, of this effort in the uh, the, we've done a good bit of outreach with the town website and social media and getting the word out. The survey has been very helpful and we're looking forward to more input based on the survey. Stakeholders have been identified in the community and we're interviewing those. These are key leaders in the business, social and community sectors of the uh, town. We're uh, now having community meetings. Again, there's a drop-in meeting going on now at the French Broad River Academy and those materials at that, that are presented at that meeting will be moved throughout the town. We're also doing outreach to underrepresented population given the, uh, the fairly high number of Hispanic residents of the community. The survey is available in Spanish and the information we're providing about the comprehensive planning effort has been translated to Spanish so we can receive the input of that portion of the population. And we'll continue with our drop-in visioning and input exhibits. And as noted at the bottom of the comments from community members are an important part of the public engagement plan and gathering community feedback. As I said at the beginning of this, the plan will be based upon the comments from the community. And so your input is key to the success of the planning effort. We, we're still uh, accepting suggestions for media and other contacts for sharing information, places to share the information in the exhibits. If you have a, a place that you frequent and think it would be a good location for our posters and other information about the planning effort, please let us know. We'll, we'll put those there. there uh, in, for in-person community meetings, given the pandemic, it's tough, but we're hoping that prior to the uh, completion of this planning effort, we're in a better 
situation with regard to the pandemic, if you have a place that you think would be ideal for in-person community meeting, please let us know. And also please share photos and graphics with the project team. You can send them to me at the, the email address you see there. Drop them off at town hall if they're uh, if they're physical rather than, than digital. And uh, now we'll get into our draft vision statement. And this was uh, revised yesterday, actually, in the uh, steering committee. One thing I forgot to mention about the uh, community involvement, we do have a steering committee composed of a representatives of a broad range of the community who are working with us to, to guide the planning effort. And to, they will be the one to present the vision statement and prove that send it on to the planning board and the uh, board of commissioners for adoption. But at this point, the draft vision statement is Woodfin is a small mountain town with a strong, vibrant population that cherishes community, embraces the natural beauty that surrounds it, supports and encourages the su success of local business, and fosters artistic creativity. If you have any thoughts or um, edits or revisions regarding this draft vision statement, please let us know. You can email, email me or email the uh, planning office, Adrian at the town, or just let, let us know through some of the uh, steering committee members. The plan structure, we've talked about this before, but the, uh, the plan builds will build on, on that vision statement and the guiding principles and then result in goals and objectives will be used to guide the growth and development of the community and the provision of certain services and activities. The uh, vision statement describes how the community wants to look in 2042. It's a high level overarching view of the uh, where the community will be. The guiding principles support the uh, vision statement and define land use values and, and priorities for the community. They also would be a measurement tool for evaluating the uh, effectiveness of future land use changes and developments. Finally, the goals and objectives provide direction to help implement the comprehensive plan and they're typically more concrete and you know, solid than the guiding principles in the vision statement. Right. Next steps for this effort and include wrap up and discovery of, of the wrap up of the discovery and analysis phase. We'll complete our interviews of stakeholders, orders. we'll wrap up the uh, community survey, and then the uh, town board of commissioners will approve the vision statement and guiding principles. We'll continue community engagement and outreach as we develop the, uh, the gist of the plan. We'll, uh, we're currently drafting the plan intro and background sections, and we'll have those completed soon. We'll draft the future land use map, and then continue to provide opportunities for public input and questions. But with that, I want to thank you. But the key is you need to let us know what you think. You can take the survey, you can provide input in other matters. And at this point, I'm happy to answer questions and hear comments from the community. Adrian and I will attempt to answer your questions and take note of all your comments and thoughts. And again, thank you for taking the time to, to be part of this effort. Any questions or thoughts? I don't know. Can you hear me? Yes. Hey, oh, okay. Jeff, yes, Jeff, hi. One minute. Um, sure. Jeff raised his hand and then we'll get to you. Okay. All right. Thanks. Are you recognizing me, Adrian? Yes. Um, I'm concerned about the uh, fact that we have so few homeowners relative to uh, adjacent municipalities and county, what are we doing to try and address that and make housing uh, available and affordable for the people that would live and work in Woodfin, particularly young families? Okay. One thing we can do is uh, recommend possible revisions to the zoning ordinance to promote 
the construction of affordable housing, maybe smaller lots, things that do that, smaller lot sizes, but also allowing mixed uses and looking at Weaverville Highway is more an opportunity for this mixed use types of development that would include residential units. The uh, lack of uh, density and the age of some of the properties along Weaverville Highway may be an opportunity for providing that affordable housing for people who work in and around with them. Are there limitations uh, in that area that you've just referenced with regard to utilities, uh, sewer, water that you think need to be addressed in order to enhance the possibility of developing those areas? Based on uh, the uh, conversations I've had with MSD and the Woodman Water District, there do not appear to be any uh, limitations on water or sewer in that area. There is some floodplain where the um, creek that flows, and I'll, forgive me, I've forgotten the name of the creek that flows out of Baird Cove, but where that flows down along Weaverville Highway, provide, there's some limitations due to the floodplain, but they're pretty minimal. When you think about it, you know, the uh, mobile home park that's along Weaverville Highway on the, um, as you're going north, it's on the right side. That may be an opportunity for redevelopment there. There are other opportunities, maybe other opportunities for redevelopment, but with the uh, recommended changes in the zoning ordinance to allow a uh, greater density and, and mixed uses, that may be an opportunity perhaps. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for bringing that up because that is a, an issue that is uh, something we, we need, the community needs to address. Hey, Jeff, if you have a question. Sure. Um, I know there had been some discussions before about creating a main street for the town of Woodfin because we really don't have a central business district as such. Um, the closest thing we have is Weaverville Highway. And, you know, as you mentioned, we've got mobile home parks on some side. We've got some ramshackle houses on the other uh, it's a real Duke's mixture of things. And I think it would be nice to have like a central boulevard with a tree line median and decorative lights, and then really have a, a common design theme to what retail and residential and business uh, uh, elevations that people see as they drive down, similar to like a Biltmore Village where everything kind of has a similar look and feel and there's a continuity that would go all the way uh, to Reynolds Village, uh, then to uh, the uh, place that used to be the Putt-Putt Golf Course that I guess is supposed to be another uh, twist of Laurel restaurant, but have nice wide sidewalks because, you know, as we get these water parks going, it would be nice to have people have the ability to stroll up and down the street because uh, there is no sidewalk or bike path on that road. Um, it, it, it's pretty just jointed and, you know, I can send you pictures if you need a memory refresher. It, it just needs a good facelift. And uh, I, I just wasn't sure what the plan was for, you know, a major uh, kind of downtown business district for Woodfin. Mm -hmm. And that's an uh, issue that has come up with a number of the surveys and was even an issue back in 2008 when that plan was done. One of the challenges with Weaverville Highway is that it's a state highway and NCDOT has to approve everything. And uh, here I'll, I'll state my frustration and with the NCDOT engineers, their lack of a vision for multimodal uh, transportation corridors may make some of what you mentioned difficult in terms of uh, you know, planet median and bikeways, but we can certainly work with them and push as much as we can. I think one of the things we can do is look at the uh, zoning and the uses permitted along Weaver Hill Highway and create more of a pedestrian friendly 
environment by reducing setbacks, having buildings set closer to the uh, to the uh, street, limiting uh, parking in front of buildings, uh, addressing curb cuts, um, requiring landscaping, street trees. If if Bouyhoe Bill Highway is identified as the uh, main street for Woodfin, and then we need to make it look like a main street. Well, and kind of to piggyback on that, um, there is that Woodfin rail line that's just on the, you know, right where uh, Merriman Road bends to become Weaverville Highway. And it would certainly be nice to have a spur of that railroad uh, train go up and down that sector. And then that would give us access to more parking for people who want to use our, our soon to be unlocked, unveiled parks and, you know, have more uh, people that would come to the parks and then maybe take the train to any of the number of restaurants along the way and, and then end up with their car. Um, so uh, I, I know the train is going to play a role in the, the whole park development to help get people move from place to place. So I would just like to recommend that there be a role for the train along Weaverville Highway too. Okay, thanks. Sure. Hey, Miller. Hi, um, thanks for having this, this meeting. It's really helpful to stay up to date. I really appreciate you guys uh, asking for community input. I've uh, lived in Woodfin for a couple of years now. Um, and I just want to weigh in to say, I really caution the town um, not to develop too quickly, too densely. What I value about this community is the green spaces and the open spaces. I wanna see as much of that stay as possible. Um, you know, that's what makes this community so special. You talked about that in your vision statement. Um, if we could be encouraging farms instead of buildings, um, places where people could be growing food in the, in the coming years when the climate is gonna get more and more tricky for us um, as human beings, um, that I just wanna weigh in and, and say that I, we really need to be thinking about green spaces um, more, uh, and responsible development and things that are not too dense and not the kinds of things that are <laughs> going downtown in Asheville. Um, the amount of development uh, in the areas is a bit out of control and I don't, I don't wanna see that happen to me. I'd like to see us be responsible with what we do. Okay, I appreciate that. And uh, in one way, uh, first of all, I don't think we're going to be able to stop people from moving here. And we have to identify those places where density is appropriate. And as I uh, stated in response to Jeff's question, maybe that's along Riverville Highway creating a, more of a mixed use, higher density um, corridor there to, in order to take the pressure off some of those open development of those open spaces. We also, as part of the planning effort, can look at the for those areas that should be preserved as open space and lower density. But you know, it's a tough uh, it's a tough effort and tough job to balance the preservation of what we have with the continuing population growth in this area. And that's something that this plan will look at and and take a uh, stand on identifying those areas to be preserved, but also identifying the areas where higher density may be appropriate. I, I appreciate that. I know it's a tricky balance. Um, I just want to make sure that we do our best to really pay attention and be thoughtful about it. Thanks so much. I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Do you have another question? Yes, uh, along the same lines with regard to Highway 25 and being a state maintained road, uh, wherein they are in control of what happens with that. Have we had any uh, discussions or thoughts about trying to encourage a change in the uh, interchange off of I-26 at Newstock Road? That seems to be kind of a troublesome area. Mm -hmm. And I think that the traffic flow would be much better, but obviously we have to get the DOT not only to accept that that needs to be addressed, but then also come up with the funds to do it, because I'm sure that that is in their court. 
but have we got any any communication trying to encourage that? I'll speak just from the standpoint of this uh, planning effort. I've uh, reached out to NCDOT staff and have not received it. That was a couple of weeks ago, and I renewed that request uh, this week and have not received any response from them yet on, on general questions related to transportation corridors and their role in maintaining Weaverville Highway and Riverside Drive. And then, and when I do uh, hear from them, I'll ask them about New Stock Road, but I'm not aware of any conversations regarding that. And I'm not sure that's in the town of Whitman. There, there are some plans on um, I'm changing that interchange, um, but as you may be aware, <laughs> DOT's had some budget issues lately and that project has been moved back. Um, I don't have all the, all the facts right here in front of me, but I'd be glad to follow back up with you and let you know where that stands. And I'll help you, Adrian, if I hear anything. So we'll get an answer for you too. My understanding is that with the infrastructure bill that's been passed uh, nationally, that there's perhaps an opportunity if we can get some of our state or federal uh, legislators on board that we might be able to encourage some uh, investment in that improvement of that interchange, which I think would be very beneficial if we're going to try and make the uh, Weaverville Highway kind of our main downtown business district. Yeah, I agree with you. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll take a note of that and, and we'll get some more information on what's, what's currently happening with that. Any other questions or comments or thoughts? I think Jeff is trying to raise his hand uh, right. on the screen. <laughs> Thank you. Um, one thing that I would like to uh, see addressed in the plan is uh, I would like the town to restrict uh, parking of vehicles on just uh, the side of the road, grassy patches. I'd like to limit it to hard surfaces such as stone, or concrete asphalt, or ideally uh, the concrete block that has the places where plants can grow up through so that it's a hard surface that doesn't have ruts. There can be green grass growing up through. It's got drainage for water. Um, I live at Tin New Bridge, and we have this huge parking lot in front of our space, which probably has 30 cars because the space wasn't designed with enough parking and there's just mud holes and ruts and, and everything else. And it just kind of reminds me of the wild, wild west where people are just parking anywhere and everywhere. And uh, I, I'd like to see, you know, things like motorhomes, boats, RVs, uh, horse trailers, all that on, required to be on a solid surface pad. Um, so I'm not sure where in the plan that would go, but I, I just think it kind of gives a little more of a tailored look to the town and not quite uh, such a, a rural presence, you know. Okay, that would have to be in the uh, in the zoning ordinance. The plan can recommend uh, revisions to the zoning ordinance to address parking and and even landscaping or parking and requiring a certain amount of pervious uh, surfaces like the block you talked about. But again, that's right. the next step back. The plan again is not legally binding, but a revision to the zoning ordinance to address parking would be the place where that could be addressed. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? You know, Jeff, along those lines, we're, we're already aware of some ordinance changes, amendments that need to be made and another area that we may want to 
spend some time looking at is our nuisance violations um, and, and cleaning that up and making that more clear for those who are enforcing those violations. Um, and, you know, things like people parking in their front yards and, and those issues. Um, I think we could spend some time revisiting <coughs> regulations as well. And isn't there a movement underway to uh, try to get an ordinance that would require property owners to tear down uh, properties that are not inhabitable? You know, at, at one thing that comes to mind is that lumber yard on Merriman Road, right, as the, the front door from Asheville into um, uh, Woodfin, you know, half the building got cut down by Buncombe County when they put in that water line and the rest of it is just falling down. And, you know, there still is that open pit that I reported earlier this week to Sherry and there's no fencing around it. And so anybody walking along would fall into a pit, but, you know, something that would require the property owners to completely level and clear that kind of land so that we don't have to live with an eyesore for years or else they can build a, a fence and have artists locally paint a big mural around it uh, so that it's all hidden from view. If they don't want to have to tear it down, then, you know, they can do like a lot of urban areas do where they have a like an eight foot tall wooden fence and it's either painted solid green or you hire an artist to uh, do a mural so it becomes kind of a, a feature point uh, versus an eyesore. Yes, um, we are We are definitely, that's been brought to our attention and um, that's part of the comprehensive plan discussions is, is ideas like you just said, the fence and the murals and things like that. Um, so I know we're going to have a lot of work to do once this plan is in place, um, but these are the thoughts and ideas that we're looking for so we can implement, um, right. implement those things. And I think bringing attention to like, those things helps because uh, just south of the uh, old lumber yard, the old motel that was a real last work 10, 12 years ago. There, it has been converted and into office spaces and looks a lot better. So bringing attention and focusing on those is, is certainly helpful. Thanks for your ideas. Uh, one other thought I had, um, I know at one point, uh, Eric Hardy had given me a list of kind of some of the, the code violation things. And one of the things was uh, chickens roaming uh, in the town. And I know at one point, the, the thought was, is that animal control responsibility was going to shift out of the town of Woodfin into Buncombe County. And I didn't know if that had happened or not. That uh, that did happen, yes. Okay, good. I mean, I was just in uh, Key West, and of course, they have chickens running through the restaurants and the retail stores and things. But it's cute, and it gives people a chance to sell T-shirts and mugs and paperweights and whatnot with all of that. But I really don't want that as something that's a hallmark of Woodfin. And I think Silva, the town of Silva, is dealing with that right now. Um. Now, animal control of Buckingham County is dealing with is more the cats and dogs side of things. Um, the town is, uh, is, has the chicken, chicken ordinance, and um, we have the new code enforcement officer that's been in a couple months, and she's been very active on, on, the, on the chicken issues. Um, so, so does she capture them and then give them to Mana for their food pantry, or what happens to the, she, the chickens? She, she was, you're allowed to have chickens as long as they're not free range chickens. And so she right. spends time making sure they're not free range. She hasn't gotten to the point where people haven't um, complied with her request to pin them. So okay. I don't know what the next step would be. We, we haven't gotten there yet. Okay. Well, I might just suggest, you know, man is always looking for more protein sources. And if we can get a cage and she can just shoot them into a cage, then I'm sure they have a program where they could pluck them and then make them available for people in the community. Okay. Great for a crock pot. Have we got any uh, 
plan or or thoughts about multifamily versus single family as we try to address the housing issues? Uh, where do we where do we stand in terms of percentage of multifamily units versus perhaps Asheville or Buncombe County? And is that something that we should be trying to encourage or discourage or uh, how, do, how do we go about trying to make certain that we can house the people that would like to live and work in Woodfin? We have not looked at the uh, percentage of, of uh, multifamily in Woodfin as compared to Asheville. But we are, as part of the future land use map, we'll be looking at appropriate locations for multifamily. And again, I'm, I think uh, corridors like Riverville Highway with higher density mixed uses to create that um, Main Street deal would be appropriate for higher density apartments or multifamily condos. And there likely are other locations as a work on the uh, future land use map with Adrian and Kenny and, and Linda, where the utilities are in place, the transportation corridors are appropriate and the, there are no environmental constraints that would would restrict higher density multifamily housing. And I, I do think that's an important element in housing the people who want to move to, to Woodfin and Buncombe County. Other questions or comments? Oh, I see you, Jeff. Go ahead. Okay, thanks. Um, I just want to make sure that as we do these affordable homes, that we provide plenty of parking for the vehicles. I've seen some development in Fairview and in Arden where uh, the parking is all supposed to be on the street. And so when everybody is home at the end of the day, you can barely get down the street. And then if you have people over to your house for dinner or anything else, there's not a lot of parking unless you walk a few blocks down the road. And so I just wanna make sure that there's at least places for two cars off the street as any of these uh, developments go through that, that we don't just say, well, you can park on the street uh, instead of having any designated parking on the land where the, the people live. So I, I just wanna make sure there's room for other people and then there's room for guests uh, to park. I understand your, your uh, comment, but I have to admit I'm philosophically on the other end of the uh, spectrum of you. I think we dedicate way too much land to parking and that's not used, it's an inefficient use of property. And unfortunately, America doesn't have a parking problem. It has a walking problem. Right. Well, and one thing might be to do like kind of like beach houses where you build the house up and the garage is underneath, and then you just have elevators. I mean, a lot of the places at the beach, you know, have that. Uh, it, of course, they, they build it up high for flooding and hurricanes and things of that nature, but <laughs> Uh, that way, we're not using any more land, but uh, we we do have a place for the vehicles rather than just crowding the streets. Because you know, some of the streets, quite honestly, it would be hard for a fire truck or emergency vehicles to navigate when everybody's home, uh, with cars just loaded on either side of a road. And, and we'll certainly look at different options. Uh, even though I'm philosophically opposed to providing a lot of parking. I realize most people get from one point to another with the vehicle and that we have to provide that some more balance and look at different options for parking. Right. Along those same lines, as we look at parking, the idea of elevators and uh, parking underneath and residential above, two things come to mind there. First, the cost of an elevator in a private residence would mean that many of our uh, housing units would be much less available to the people that really need them. And the second is that if we have parking underneath and living space above, that's difficult for those that might have uh, a disability 
or for the aged population to have to walk up to. So, so mandating that we would have parking underneath and, and residential above, I would not be in favor of. I don't think we'll go there. I, I agree that the challenges you mentioned are are real, and that we need we look for other options. And I don't, you know, personally, I don't want to see beach houses, beach arch, architecture in the mountains either. Not unless we can bring in the beach. <clears throat> yes. Yeah. Well, well, we'll have it. <laughs> As the seas rise, we'll have, have a oceanfront property in Buncombe County at some point. <laughs> Any other thoughts, comments, or questions? I appreciate the opportunity to share ideas with this uh, group of people and to, to have the input as we look forward to the future. Well, thank you, and thank all of you for your your uh, participation. And those of you who commented, and please uh, make sure you take the survey and you if you think of any comments or thoughts. Uh, please let us know. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye. Bye.